So the idea was to create something you could use for wheel things like wheelbarrows and lawnmowers. I also want to dig down deep enough to the compacted clay. I install a form for the other side of this trench so we can get a bed of concrete that's going to lie underneath it from the flat part to the ramped area. off your shoes and leave the winter and the pain it brings to you. Lay your head upon my shoulder, shut off your thoughts and clear your mind. I just wanted to talk about the construction and design of this retaining wall for this garden landscape. Because this was just a sloped mud hill before with collapsing retaining walls. Anyway, we're going to go through all the steps and procedures for this entire system. I wanted to use this uh, yellow brick because it matches the house that you can see in the background. So we've used it on the top of the walls and we've used it to sort of create a border for this gravel ramp that goes around the corner of our wall. We already have a nice staircase on the existing deck. So the idea was to create something you could use for wheel things like trolleys and wheelbarrows and lawnmowers to get up and down from this height down to this height. The next step in completing our ramp was to finish off these two small foundations that create this bottom platform. I'm starting with the excavation of two small trenches to give us room to build our formwork for the concrete we're going to be pouring in. I'm preparing one trench at a time due to my limited space here. I don't want to cave in one trench whilst I'm excavating the other. So I'm going to excavate this first trench, have it finished and prepared for concrete and then move on to the next trench. I'm trying to dig deep enough to be able to give us a nice thick slab of concrete. I also want to dig down deep enough to the compacted clay as it makes a better base to put our concrete on. In this particular circumstance I have to look out for the drainage that I installed previously when we're building the wall. So I have to be extra careful and take it easy with this mattock so I don't punch a hole in the pipe that's hidden underground here. Once I've dug this trench out to the appropriate depth, I add some bedding gravel as part of the process that's going to be under the concrete. I'm compacting this gravel with my feet to create a really firm base for the concrete we're going to pour over it later. Having gravel under your concrete is part of the engineering system that keeps the concrete strong and stops it cracking. The gravel helps water pass underneath the concrete without creating erosion. I'm constructing a timber formwork to create a concrete bridge between our two previous poured foundations on the sides of this pathway. I'm using two pieces of overlapping timber to get the right height and depth for this formwork. I'm locking them together with screws to keep them solid when we pour this concrete in. I'm adding some hardwood stakes and screwing them off to our form timbers. This is all part of creating a really stable structure so when we pour the concrete, this top edge of the formwork doesn't move because we want to ensure a really consistent flat join between these two previously poured foundations. I install a form for the other side of this trench and lock it in with timber braces. I move on to the second trench we're going to dig using some of the gravel I'm excavating to backfill some of the gaps on the trench we just created to help stabilize the ground so when we're standing on it pouring the concrete we don't create any little cave-ins. I install the second formwork into the trench which is essentially identical to the first one. We backfill that with some gravel to stabilize it then add some reinforcement steel in preparation for the concrete pour. I'm mixing the concrete out on the front of the property and transporting it in with my barrow and tubs. I temporarily move the reinforcement bar out of our way so we can get a bed of concrete that's going to lie underneath it. 
My concrete mix is six to one Portland cement, sand, gravel with our Boncrete additive, saying we're joining to pre-existing concrete. I return the rebar into the formwork once we've got enough concrete in the bottom of the system. With the rebar sitting on a nice thick bed of concrete, we just add concrete on top to fill the whole system. We just keep adding concrete, agitating it in with our trowel to take all the air bubbles out and push it into all the nooks and crannies. Once we've added enough concrete, we start tapping it with a hammer. This will make the concrete sink a little bit, so we add a little more and then screed it off with our trowel and move on to the next form. Never give up when we feel I'm only I'm only I'm not lonely when I'm with you. This morning we're going to take out the formwork for this concrete we poured yesterday because we used some rapid set concrete in there mixed in to help it set faster. We disassemble our formwork the same way as we've done many times through this project. Just take our time back the screws out, pull the timbers out, clean them as we go. I often add rapid set or a concrete accelerant if I need a form to set up more quickly than normal. I needed to get this foundation ready so we could lay our bricks out and get this project finished. How much I will and won't I double check my concrete's come out as I need it to for this foundation. We just take a good look at everything before we move on to the next stage. Well today's task is going to be preparing for putting our bricks down, our paving bricks on these concrete foundations we poured and then we're going to have decorative gravel filled in between them. It's time to move the bricks in that are outside the property on the curbside pallet. As we did previously in our project, whenever we're moving materials in, it's a good opportunity to check the quality of our product. These paving bricks do have some transport damage, little chips on the corners and the sides, and they also have some very heavy stains on them. So it's a good opportunity for me to figure out which side of the brick I want to use on the finished product. So as I transport them and move them around, I'm constantly sorting them and stacking them the way up I want to use them on the final project. We're going to need 120 of these, so probably four loads. Part of keeping organised on your job site is to stack your materials in a convenient close by position to where you're going to use them. And in this particular case we have this seat we put on the corner. So I'm using that as a place to store all these bricks. There's enough room for the amount of bricks we need for this pathway. So we're going to stack them up a few courses right here and they'll be really convenient when it comes to laying them. We lived our lives the way we want Without fear You told me all the time I'd have no chance I'd say I wouldn't have If you weren't there so we're going to go through all the procedures of just getting these stuck down nice and flat and plumb and lined up. These particular pavers don't all match exactly due to the way they've been manufactured so it was a little fiddly to get them all sort of lined up but we've done it nicely here and we'll go through all the steps. 
One of the last things I need to do to prepare before we do our dry layout is to do a light grinding of our entire foundation to get rid of any concrete bumps that were created when we poured our formwork. So I'm just using my small grinder with the diamond blade on it to grind these foundations nice and flat. I'm now giving it a thorough wash down so we can remove any residue left from the grinding and any small pebbles and grit because that'll get in the way of us sticking these tiles down. Then we just have one final check of the whole foundation before we start putting our bricks down. I have to make a couple of custom cuts on these paving bricks at the transition points where the pathway transitions from the flat part to the ramped area. I've marked an angle on the edge of this brick with my pencil. So I've set my saw up with a piece of timber so I can do an angled cut with the wet saw. With the angle cut done successfully, I turn the brick round to do a straight cut to cut it to size in our pattern. After completing all the cuts on the custom size bricks, we continue our dry layout. This dry layout is extra important for these particular pavers because they're all slightly different sizes. So we need to place them out first and then glue them in in batches just like we did for the top of the wall. Once we finish laying out all our bricks, we make one last double check to make sure that everything's in order before we start cementing them down. Started past my time and felt sorry. Join me on the next episode as we stick these pavers down and then fill them with golden path gravel. Unless you see. How much I will and won't do for you Can you tell me if that will do Thanks for joining me this week in my YouTube channel. Check the link below and while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or make a comment so I can help you with your future construction solutions. And don't forget to follow our channel for more ideas and how-to tips for home and garden projects.